Podcast. The Lhasa Podcast. Hey, sexy friend. He's making me his bitch. Maybe you want to get a piece of that. Pretty good. I want to talk about sexy teens. I was getting erections. It's a very creepy feeling. I can guarantee that underwear theft will come up again. None of this is relevant. Pokemon, Pokeballs. 750 milliliter bottle of rum. Welcome to the Velocity Podcast. A study in monology. This is your grumpy uncle Peter. He will say words at you. So back in November, November 25th to be exact, episode 271 called Randomitis. This is what happens when you actually start to update your Excel sheet that you're supposed to do, keep track of topics. I talked about flat earthers and conspiracy theories and things like that. And in Ninja News Japan, of course, I consistently talk about uh, coronavirus. Now, I was struggling with what do I talk about? It's the second last episode. I know what I'm going to do for the last episode, but what do I do for the second last episode? And I got an email, sort of. I got messages on Twitter, which is obviously the best place to get messages. Uh, and it was talking about, well, it was talking about Ninja News Japan, but it fits into the conspiracy theory thing. So this is a message. I'm not going to say who from, so I'm not going to put it up on screen because I don't want to like dox anybody even accidentally. Uh, but I thought this was interesting. Because it's the second step of conspiracy theories, or conspiracy theorists, is they want to convert people. Like, I believe in the science. I believe in all this other stuff. So, I mean, I don't believe in the conspiracy theories. Uh, people disagree with that, which is fine. Uh, but, so here's the message. So, hello, Peter. Found your podcast on BitChute, that's a video sharing website, and was enjoying listening to the first few episodes, but then you started talking about flu case yearly trends and masks. I was pretty disappointed to see that you've fallen for the ridiculous, proven to be non-existent coronavirus. Now, there's already your first one. That's that's a a heavy opener. Uh, I did enjoy that they were disappointed in me, that somehow... First of all, their disappointment would mean something to me, is actually the first part. Uh, I don't know you, therefore if you're disappointed in me, it it means nothing. So when I read that, I I didn't go like, oh, someone I don't know is disappointed in me on the internet. So that was step one. Pretty disappointing to see that you've fallen for the ridiculous, proven to be non-existent coronavirus narrative. Now that is a, a pretty heavy statement because... I'm pretty sure there's like a million Americans now that would disagree. But we have, of course, we have to get their justification before we can make a judgment. Proven to be non-existent is tough, though. I have trouble accepting that because if it's proven to be non-existent, where is that proof and why has it not come forward? Now, they're going to say, I haven't gotten to the next parts. But in my episode about conspiracy theories, I talked about how many people would have to be complicit in a conspiracy theory for it to be successful. Now, coronavirus is literally worldwide. And they are talking about every single knowledgeable doctor who actually understands viruses and whatnot would have to agree to stay silent, would have to agree to say nothing. And then the number of pathologists who've come out to say that the coronavirus is not real is pretty small. And it has been two years, but whatever. The coronavirus narrative, as well as the dangerous mask nonsense, my feelings are not important here or why I'm messaging you now. So they're not messaging here because of of their feelings, which I actually think that is 100% the reason, is they feel like they need to tell people the truth. So that's why they're doing it. It's not not actually to make the world a better place. Uh, The reason I'm messaging you is to tell you to think, my friend. Think, think, think. Now, what everyone loves is being condescended to. As if I were too dumb to actually think my way through this problem. So what they've set up is A, they're disappointed in me. So disappointment comes from an authority figure if it's going to be effective, successful. So they've already set themselves up in their mind as being smarter or more authoritative on this topic. Second, they're telling me to think 
which is implying that I have not thought, but that they have, the, the underlying implication is they have thought about this. They've thought about it more deeply and more thoroughly, which is why they know the truth and I do not. So they're trying to educate me. And again, education has to actually come from a position of a certain amount of authority or it's not going to be accepted. Let's see how this works out. Think, think, think. So, oh, the condescension thing. Oh, sorry. I'm not, it's gonna be hard for me to get past someone condescending to me. I'll be really honest. Uh, I have at points in the past talked about conversion for political parties. Primarily, we talk about the American political system because it's most prevalent in the news. So you have the conservatives. They do a lot of condescending to liberals. Now, liberals do it too, but it's not to the same degree. So you're going to see a lot more, I think, conversion from conservative to liberal uh, than the other way. But it does seem to be a trend that once people get older and have money, they tend to fall more on the conservative side. But the condescension, so like if I say your beliefs are wrong, I disagree with your beliefs, all that kind of stuff, that may be true. But if I say it that way, what I'm doing is actually making it more difficult for them to come to my side of belief, even if I have convincing arguments. So they've already made a mistake. This person who's trying to like basically convert me has already failed by saying basically they're smarter than me and they look down on me because I'm smart enough to realize that's what they're doing. Uh, you'd have to be pretty weak-willed to not feel that way. Anyways, let's get on to the next part. The reason that flu cases are down is because the symptoms newly labeled as COVID are the same symptoms that people tend to associate with the flu. COVID is the flu, which is not a virus. Now, here's the thing. Earlier it said COVID does not exist, but now they're saying COVID is the flu. So if COVID is the flu, then it exists. So you can already see like their, their arguments are already actually starting to be contradictory. COVID is not the flu, by the way. I did look it up. Uh, what are the differences? They are two different viruses. Now they're, they've stated pretty clearly uh, COVID is the flu, which is not a virus. Uh, the flu is a virus and COVID is a different virus. So they are actually wrong on both counts. It was a very quick Google search. I just typed in, is COVID a virus? And then it actually came up with differences and similarities. First result was differences and similarities between COVID and flu. And its first sentence was, they're both viruses, but, you know, different. And COVID's more contagious. Also, the flu numbers have been disappeared, have disappeared in every country the past few years because the flu is being relabeled as COVID in every country, including Japan. Uh, that's actually not true. Again, they are doing testing for COVID. They are still doing testing for flu. The reason flu cases are down is because people are doing all the preventative measures that they weren't doing before. So basically, in the future, if we keep doing these preventative measures, it will most likely keep the flu numbers down in the future. Uh, again, with Omicron, it's probably more likely we're not going to have much of a flu season. We're going to have a COVID season. Is more realistic, which is pretty bleak to think about, but that is just the reality we're talking about. I don't understand how it isn't obvious to anyone, but whatever. So again, there we are with condescension again. Like I have said, uh, coronavirus is not a virus. It's the flu. How that's not obvious to everyone, I don't know. So again, they're calling me stupid. The problem is they've actually put forward no actual proof of what they're saying. Now, of course, that's the next part. Uh, the actual proof of what they're saying. Where is the proof that coronavirus is not a real thing and that it's just the flu? And why then is the flu now hitting people in such large numbers? Because we do have a million dead in America. We have X amount of so many people dead. We have tallies every day. We have 500 sick every day in Japan. New cases of this not coronavirus. Even if it's just the flu. Let's just say that. Let's just say you're right that the coronavirus is just a flu. It is an incredibly more contagious flu that's killing people. So how does that actually any different from it being coronavirus? Now we get to the, the part I was kind of expecting, and it's a series of videos. They've given me a playlist. And of course, 
most of them are incredibly long, so I wasn't really going to watch them. But let's uh, let me just get through some of the more of the writing before I get to that part. And about masks, what can I tell you except a few hundred reasons, conservative number, why masks do not work? Are ridiculous cause I think it's physiological and physical oh, psychological. It's a spelling mistake, but I'm not actually going to judge them on that. That's just typing. Psychological and physical damage to people's health. Now, I have a lot of, again, there's no actual proof here. This, as it devolves, uh, I think, hits more on anti-mask than and that coronavirus isn't real. But, okay, let's go through that really slowly. Why mask, a hundred reasons why masks do not work. So the point of the mask is to stop stuff getting in your face. Bacteria, virus, uh, allergy, allergens, things like that. It is a barrier between the two things. Now, it is not 100% effective, guaranteed, uh, primarily because people don't wear them right. Like you see a lot of people, they wear it, it's under their nose, uh, it's loose. Uh, I actually have a beard right now, which means the seal between my skin and the mask would not be effective. It wouldn't actually be as sealed. So technically mine is less effective right now. But it is actually really logical that if you stick a barrier between your face and the world, that less stuff is going to get into your face. And if the whole point is to stop stuff getting in your face, then they are going to be effective to a degree. Now, if you're saying they're not effective you're saying that the coronavirus can get through them. If the coronavirus can get through them, you are also admitting that coronavirus exists. They are ridiculous. That's just an opinion, so that doesn't actually mean anything. They cause psychological and physical damage to people's health. I actually disagree with that. I, because of my job, wear a mask all day, every day. And it has not negatively impacted my health. In fact, I have said a couple of times, because I suffer from allergies so much, it has actually improved the state of my allergies overall. Not perfect, by like evidence by today. I'm still sniffing and stuff. But it's, it's better than it was because less allergens are getting in my face. And I have not caught the flu. I have not caught a cold. I have not caught coronavirus. And I am intermixing with other people quite often. I take the train and stuff. And that's hundreds and hundreds of people. Uh, the physical damage, again, they're saying that usually that's going to breathing uh, CO2 and it's actually been proven. I, there's a, there was a, a thing I saw on TikTok and it was a girl who has like lung issues and she has to wear a mask and she actually has a thing that measures uh, how much O2 is in her lungs and body and stuff. And she was wearing a mask and she was, she wore an industrial mask. She had like about 10 because this is obviously a big problem in her life uh, of different degrees she wore each one and then measured herself and showed that it actually factually was incorrect. So they had measurements. So this playlist, the videos they sent me, was prepared especially to help misinform people such as yourself understand the purpose, science, and reason why we've been told to wear masks. So please take a look, all right? I went to the playlist. It is all just anti-mask stuff, primarily. Very little to do uh, with coronavirus. And the actual interesting thing, it has less to do with silence science and more to do with the psychological and physical damage of wearing a mask uh, and the reasons why we've been told to wear it. so there this is now getting to government conspiracy and again now we've hit the point where it is the conspiracy is not sustainable because this conspiracy is worldwide early on in the pandemic i had a co-worker who said she didn't believe in coronavirus that there were court cases coming up uh in the world court by this German guy. And I actually looked at the video and it was pretty funny because it was like a guy with a setup no better than mine. He'd put some books in the background. And he said, like, I'm a lawyer. And I'm like, is he? And he said, I was part of this, this group. And I'm like, what is that group? Because again, there's a lot of statements made, but if you don't examine the statements, they sound authoritative. But re the reality is he could be in a group of other people like him who just get together on Tuesdays and eat lunch. And they just call themselves that. And it sounds, and they give themselves a really fancy lawyery sounding name. I have all the evidence and understanding about what the coronavirus situation is all about. And for the most part, at least, planning, purpose, and the dire consequences we will all face if this clown show is allowed to continue. So hopefully you would like to hear more and learn the truth. And if you do 
then please let me know so I can inform you on the truth of the matter. So what they've said, this is a form of baiting. Watch some of the videos. And if you agree with me, let me know and I will tell you the truth. So you can see what they've done is they're actually like, they're, they're baiting, hoping like, basically this is like fishing. If I get a tug, then I'm going to pull in and give them a little bit more, a little bit more. And this is also very much like cult stuff. They want to find people who are looking for something to believe in. Give them a taste of it. Like, oh, here you can rebel against the government, which a lot of people, again, many, many podcasts have actually said, people are sort of naturally anti-government, naturally anti-corporation, stuff like that. Um, but it gives you something to rebel against when your life is relatively empty. Uh, I don't rebel against the government, especially in Japan, because the government overall is pretty innocuous. They're not effective, but they're not malicious. They tend to just do things the minimum, but they're not out to make my life particularly worse. And most of the laws here are very sensible. And again, the second part of that is the condescension. Like, I know the truth. I can deliver the truth unto you if you agree with me. The problem is I'm never going to agree with this because they've never presented any evidence of the truth in the first place. And they haven't actually said what the truth is because there's an implication that this is a worldwide conspiracy. Uh, but they don't actually want to say that because that sounds insane. It's like watching those documentaries about aliens where they don't want to say the word aliens because they know as soon as they say it's aliens, it sort of undermines the science that they've been talking about or undermines all the logical arguments because uh, it just doesn't match up anymore. Understanding the truth will allow you to become part of the solution instead of par part of the problem, my friend. Uh, I apologize for suddenly blowing up your inbox and for doing that at such a late hour, but I felt like this, I needed to reach out to you, so that is what I did. This was Christmas Eve, which is a bit much. Uh, then we have a playlist of masks, the purpose, the health risks, the danger of compliance. And there you go. The coronavirus argument has dropped away completely from this playlist. It's just about how bad the mask is. So the first one uh, is just called Mask Whistleblowers Tell All. It's 39 minutes. I'm not going to watch that. Uh, the next one is uh, You're a Horrible Parent. There, I said it. The Masquerade Continues Abuse Via Dehumanization. That's 20 minutes. I was not going to watch that. America's frontline doctors, masks don't control viruses, they control you. Take off the mask. It's three minutes. I was. It's worth a shot. Uh, we have Dr. Mark McDonald on pandemic I lies, explains delusional hypnosis and offers a terrifying warning. It's 13 minutes. Harvard still face experiment displays the serious trauma that mask wearers cause to children. Uh, basically, that's an interesting, they misinterpreted that. So a lot of this is actually now getting not into facts about the physical damage of wearing a mask it's in the psychological you can see each argument each thing has slowly shifted the goal of what we're talking about so first it was coronavirus doesn't exist now it's masks are bad for you now it's the psychological damage of masks but let me show you a completely unrelated uh, social experiment so this still face experiment is basically a kid a child in front of their mother and if the mother makes happy faces and interacts with the child, the child is happy. If she sits there and just stares at the child and makes no expression, the child will start to cry. But that's because, and again, I think it's actually pretty obvious. You don't need like a psychology degree to understand it. If you stare at a kid and don't make an expression, the kid is like, what's wrong? Something's wrong. Like, did I do anything? I feel bad. Why am I not getting a reaction? That's because a completely blank face staring at you for an extended period indicates they're angry at you. So I did watch one of these short ones. Masks kill you slowly. It reminds them of the power over you. It's satanic. Um, coronavirus mask wearing is a worldwide initiation ritual. And then we got to this one. So I, I, I watched some of this, so I kind of know what he's going to say. Dr. Andrew Kaufman, the real reason we are told to wear a mask. So remember, this is about, initially, coronavirus. But now it's gone to anti-masking. And the reason, first reason was masks don't work against coronavirus, which does not exist. The second reason is masks do damage to you if you wear them. Like, why do you choose not to wear a mask? 
Well, uh, there, there are many, many reasons. Uh, masks are actually bad for your health. Um, and there are a lot of psychological reasons I choose not to wear one. But So he starts out with masks. There are many reasons. And then he comes up with two. They're bad for your health. No explanation as to what he means. And number two, uh, they're, they're bad for you psychologically. Uh, really underlying it is, uh, one, is there's no medical evidence that masks are beneficial. So there's no evidence that masks are beneficial to what? And again, it should be protecting you against coronavirus or protecting you against things like that. Uh, but there is. The fact is, we have bacteria in our face. There's The only thing I go back to regularly is surgeons. Surgeons wear masks for hours and hours and hours. They wear masks while they're doing surgery. And that's so that the bacteria from their mouth doesn't go into the person that is open on a table in front of them. If it works one way, it works the other way. Uh, so that's the proof. I mean, I'm not even going to do an experiment. That is the proof. Well, let's keep going. And um, there's no evidence of any pandemic, right? There's no evidence of any pandemic. Despite the fact I know people who have gotten coronavirus. Uh, I have friends who know people who have gotten coronavirus. Uh, I have a few people I know who they've had people in their family and friends. They've died. Uh, a coworker I know, his sister got coronavirus. Um, that's the evidence. The fact that people are getting it. Uh, the fact, see, they're saying that this is like some kind of international conspiracy and it's trying to shut down the world. But shutting down the world, usually we would talk about economy, uh, is not good for the economy. Like the, the one thing, the other article I read most often is about how this is bad for the economy, how this is like actually, uh, they, they want to get the economy back on track. Japan keeps pushing forward, like let's get people to go to travel. And that means like they give discounts for people traveling uh, domestically, but that spread around the coronavirus. So they're like, oh shit, we shouldn't have done that. But okay, we've only gotten like 10 seconds into this. And now of any new disease, there's no evidence of a new virus. Uh, there's no connection that of a virus causing disease. So what's the reason to wear a mask? So he's just said that. I would really love a source. Now, the problem is when you say something does not exist, uh, there is no source for that. But he's saying there's no evidence. I don't actually see how that's even possible to say when hospitals are full. Like three years ago, hospitals were not full. Now hospitals are full and you can't go to the hospital. That is evidence of a new virus. Let's say it's not even coronavirus. There is something happening. There is something making people sick. Uh, that would be evidence of a disease. Why is the mainstream media pushing this message so blatantly that like everyone needs to wear a mask to protect everyone's safety and health? Do as I say and as I do. Wear a mask. It's that simple. Like, what's the agenda behind this if, this not, if it's not true? Like, why, why are they pushing this message? So when he says mainstream media, uh, again, he uses an American channel. The irony there being, uh, that, I don't know what channel that was. It was probably CNN or something. But then you have Fox News and the, the opposite who say the exact opposite stuff. They say, don't wear a mask. Don't do any of this stuff. That is just as mainstream as the video clip they just showed. Well, um, specifically about the mask, I think there are a number of reasons. Uh, primarily, I think it's to separate people from each other, right? Because this is built on the social distancing. So now we've gotten away completely from diseases. We've gotten away completely from the fact that coronavirus doesn't exist. Because again, if you take them at their face value, what they're saying is it doesn't exist. So there's no reason to talk about what is this about. It's about controlling people, keeping them separate. But I'm wondering what the benefit of keeping me separate from other people is, which, okay, let's stick with them and see if we can get to the end of this video. Thing and the lockdown procedures, right, where we basically uh, required people to stay at home and not interact with others. And uh, they've required people to stay, you know, six feet apart. And uh, the masks then came after that. And, you know, when you um, come across someone who's wearing a mask, you can't read their facial expressions. Let me be honest. If you come across me without a mask, in just like out in the open, you cannot read my facial emotions because I have no facial emotions. I have resting non-emotional face. I don't know if there's a word for that. It's not bitch face, but it's like completely blank. I don't smile. There's nothing there. The mask is not changing that at all. 
um, you can't communicate effectively. So it really serves to separate people. But uh, I believe there are other um, underlying, uh, maybe more esoteric significance of the masks as well. Um, masks are used in initiation rituals. So this is, now we've gotten to way on the other side where they're talking about some kind of like conspiracies going a step further, initiation ritual. And uh, perhaps you could uh, envision this process as initiation into a new type of society and uh, that the participants are actually uh, going through that process as part of it. So they've said that people who wear masks are being initiated into a new society. And so the people who don't wear masks are being resistant to that. They are, uh, I guess, just the rebels. They're, they're rebelling against this, this order that they don't agree with. Um, <clears throat> I actually said, yeah, maybe we're going to be stuck into the future having a Omicron season, and that sucks. But that's that's just part of society's evolution overall. I mean, we had the flu virus, and it used to be devastating. Then we got like, okay, you, can, you have to get a needle every year, but basically that'll take care of it. I would actually say four or five years down the line, it's just going to be the exact same thing. You go get your Omicron needle, and it takes care of it. Um, also, masks um, result in shame, right? People who experience a high degree of shame, and I've encountered this many times in my... So this is, this is where they're getting really off. I encounter no shame when I'm wearing a mask. I do not feel a lot of shame in my life. Wearing a mask has not made it seem like I have a lot of shame. My practice of psychiatry, that uh, people cover their face. So there are certain hairstyles or wearing dark glasses or different ways to do this. But now we're in this sort of artificial uh, predicament where people are uh, asked or requested to cover their face and, and sometimes uh, with the force of law behind it. And this creates a situation where you feel shame about yourself that you have to cover yourself up. I, I don't feel that at all. And I think, again, these are pretty broad statements to just make out there. Like, it doesn't really, it doesn't mean anything. I get, they haven't actually said anything that I would consider salient to any of the actual points. Right, because we're saying that you're a source of danger for other people. So if we um, walk around and see other people as a danger to our health and safety, obviously we're not gonna be able to have normative social relationships uh, like we are meant to as human beings. So that's it, that's, that's the full summation of uh, his arguments is that the government is wear, making us wear masks so that we will not have the same relationships we had before. And again, never actually came out and clearly said to what end. So a new society was mentioned. Uh, this is to create shame and, and, and ruin our human relationships was mentioned. But nothing actually, again, no salient point was made. So I'm sorry, if you're going to try to convince me that wearing a mask is wrong. You have to give me a reason why. Like how it, like the CO2 is the closest that would have come to convincing me because yeah, that makes logical sense. It's just, it again, it turns out you can measure that. So once you can measure it and then find out it's not true, yeah, it loses sort of all power. But these just, these guys just brushed past the whole pandemic. They're just like, oh, it doesn't exist. It's not real. And, and I, if you want to take them at face value that it's not coronavirus, it is something. There is something happening because there's something putting people in hospitals. There's something that's making people sick. And uh, that is pretty weird. I did also get a message from people arguing about flat earthers. Uh, I've talked about flat earthers a couple of times. I talked about uh, one of the conspiracy theories. I think that was the actual topic was that flat earthers don't think Australia exists. And the message included, uh, you seem intelligent. And then later on it said, flat earthers are also, are, flat earthers are generally above average IQ. Which again, basically what they're saying is, uh, you clearly think you're smart or you want to be smart. Well, people who believe in flat earth theory, they are smart because they're critical of, of things they're told. Uh, but again, just blanket statement, uh, you get... X amount of flat earthers in a room, and I bet they are of average intelligence because that's just how that number works. You can't 
all be above average intelligence because if you are all above average intelligence, then you are just average intelligence. And that is a, an argument that people get confused very easily about. On a subreddit called Am I the Asshole? And I have talked about fandoms a few times, but this was really interesting. Uh, am I the asshole for yelling at my mom that I hate Harry Potter and to let me live my own life? So I've, I am too old to be part of the Harry Potter fandom. Like I know people my age are, but I, well, I was older when it came out, so I wasn't invested in it when I was young, so I didn't grow up with it. Whereas the people who are having kids now, so like this family here, they probably grew up with Harry Potter. Harry Potter was a big part of their life. It's how they define themselves. I would be the old Star Wars generation. Where again, I've talked about to a few friends that my understanding of morality actually can be explained using the light side and the dark side of the force. But I also understand it's a space fantasy drama thing. Uh, also, if you want to be very critical, not a very good movie. But at the time, just nothing had been seen like it before. So it would blew everyone's mind. So let me read some of this. As the title suggests, my mom is a huge Harry Potter nut. She and my dad actually met at Harry Potter IRC. Like Discord, but for old people, which is awesome because I remember what IRC is. Uh, it's like message boards. But I do love that she says Discord for old people in the early zero zeros, in the early aughts. Got married and had kids, and from day one decided to embarrass us for life, naming us after some Harry Potter and Star Wars characters. So these guys, these kids, their names come from the Harry Potter and Star Wars franchise. It's honestly been hell. I have a stupid name, and since we were little, my parents have forced stuff like Harry Potter, Star Wars, Marvel movies, etc., etc., down our throats. Everything about everything is about dragons and magic, blah, blah, blah. I'm so sick of it. Every birthday, every holiday, everything is just organized around fandom. I love this. Because this is youthful rebellion in action. So my dad liked folk music. And I grew up, grew up basically detesting folk music. Although there are a few songs because he played them so often in the car. Like you actually start playing The Gambler. I can sing along even though I do not like the song The Gambler. Uh, Kenny Rogers is not my kind of music. But my father never forced anything on me. So I never felt angry about it. He certainly didn't call me Kenny. So that's kind of that kind of stuff is where I feel that my parents were more normalized. These parents, though, they're like, if they had a daughter uh, during season six, they would have named her Khaleesi and then regretted it two years later when Khaleesi goes crazy, but whatever. So just like every Christmas, the days leading up to Christmas we have to sit down every night and watch Harry Potter movies. So it's like, whatever, seven movies? They probably, the seven nights before Christmas, they watch one every day. It's so fucking boring. And I have, understand this feeling. Being forced to watch something that your parents like is not fun. So I've certainly tried to get my kids into some stuff. Like I wanted to go see Shang-Chi. And I, I was like, hey, to my son, do you want to go see it? And he was like, yeah, whatever. And he just didn't care. And then I tried to choose a couple days and he was busy because he has like swimming and stuff. And swimming's more important. I realized like I can't force him to go because then he will enjoy it and I want him to enjoy it. So I have my fandom and I do love this kind of media and stuff, but I also understand that it's just, you know, movies. So I don't want it to impose, I don't want to impose upon it on other people like it's important. And that is the bit that people who fall into love with fandom don't understand, is that this is not important. I can usually get away with knitting or drawing on my iPad during this, but, but this year, my mom was like, let's have a technology and distraction-free night every night. But what she's saying is not true, because whatever you're watching that video on is technology. So she's just saying, watch the movie, put away your iPad, put away all your other stuff. But the knitting! It's not technology, so it would have been fine. I arranged to go over to my friend Missy's house instead for like two nights. Missy's family is normal and likes things a normal amount. That's the important part, a normal amount. So they probably like Harry Potter, but they're not going to like watch it every night, every year, and they're not going to force you to watch it, and they're not going to make your life miserable because you don't want to watch it. My mom got really mad and started talking about how it's a family tradition and how I'm basically rejecting her and want her whole thing about how you wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Harry Potter, which is a terrible thing to say to a kid. 
because you wouldn't exist if I didn't love your father. Something like that may be more true. The fact that your father and I love each other and that's heavily based in Harry Potter, that's one thing. But Harry Potter didn't will this child into existence like God did with Jesus. Oh, that would be really cool if they did. I finally had it and just yelled, nobody cares that you were a big name in the Harry Potter fan club. I don't like Harry Potter. I don't like Star Wars. I hate Marvel movies. They're all so boring. Please let me just have my own interests, which is absolutely fair. I... Since we've gotten to the second last Veloci podcast, I don't feel bad saying once again, I have done judo my whole life. And it's a very big part of my life, and I love judo. And a lot of people in judo ask me why I have not put my son in judo. He's a big kid, so he'd probably do really well. And I was like, but he doesn't want to. It's not his thing. So forcing my son to do my things is going to make it suck for him. I meet lots of kids, usually teenagers. And their dad's sitting on the side screaming at them about judo. And these kids, their faces, they look miserable. They're doing it. And often, they're pretty good because they've been forced to do it so much. But you can tell the instant they go to university and move out or whatever, they're absolutely going to quit judo and never do it again because this was not their thing. It was not their choice. My son chose swimming, and he's pretty good at it, but he loves doing it, and he swims more than I ever could. And I, I think that's great. This kid is suffering from the exact opposite of that. I couldn't help it. I started crying because I was just so frustrated because everything always has to be about Harry Potter, this Star Wars, that. Oh, Harry Potter, this, Star Wars, that. And now we're all older. They're starting to doing Game of Thrones. Everything is centered around some kind of movie or TV show or book series. And that is another complaint I had when people replace their own personalities, basically maybe don't have personalities, and use fandom to supplant that. So I actually started a long time ago saying like having a beard is not a personality. But there are people who like base everything about themselves on the fact that they have a beard and it's a really big deal to have a beard and they wear a t-shirt with a beard on it and all this stuff. But it's just like that's not a personality. That's not a person. Fandom is the same issue. Loving a piece of media does not make you a kind, interesting, or good person. And I bet they're being negative to people who don't feel the same way about their fandoms which is again what's happening here with their own kids just once i want my family to band about around something that doesn't have to do with media or these nerdy things we live in utah where there are five national parks and even though i ask every year for my birthday i've never been to arches i don't know what that is but i assume it's part of a national park that's ridiculous your kid says i want to do something for my birthday and you don't take them because you don't want to go outside is what it sounds like and that is awful well, my sister called me saying that my mom was angry and had just come home and stopped with the theatrics. I told her that I'm sick of having all this nerd stuff crammed down my throat. And just once I want to have a normal time watching normal Christmas movies and not have to pause for lightsaber battles. Am I the asshole? And of course, everyone says absolutely not. Your parents have forced essentially their lifestyle on you. Uh, I'm not going to like equate it to them being conservative and you being gay, but it's not too different psychologically they're saying we live a certain lifestyle we have an expectation that you live the same lifestyle whether you like it or not whether you agree or not it's just media is such a disposable thing it seems very silly but the actual underlying psychology is quite the same if you're into something that's great people actually love enthusiasm but if you're into something and you start to jam it down other people's throats that's not cool and if you're doing that because you don't think you have much of a personality, which you've probably never admitted to yourself, then that's the thing you got to work on. Because your interest should be something that lifts up your personality or becomes like a sparkle on the edge of your the cloud that is you. I have no idea what I just said. It should be an enhancement to your personality, not the core of your being. Velocip, 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 Velocip Podcast. Velocip Podcast. You know, the solo. Hey, sexy friend. He's making me his bitch. Maybe want to get a piece of that. Pretty good. I want to talk about sexy teens. I was getting erections. It's a very creepy feeling. I... This is the second last Velocip Podcast. In two weeks, we have the grand finale. 
I hope you haven't based your whole personality on this podcast, mainly because it is going away. Then you won't have a personality at all. I wonder what those parents do now that the franchise has ended, but I guess they just move on to the next one. I feel for that kid, and you. I'm all emotional now, but you don't know, because of the mask. This will all be edited out. It'll, it'll all be real smooth when I do it.